Yeah. I want to shift the discussion a little bit and, and come back to you, Christian, sure. and sort of putting on your philosophical hat sure. again. You are, work on something called the Character Project. Mm -hmm. You have talked about virtue, which sure. seems like a very old-fashioned word. Do we need to bring back these concepts of virtue and character? Are these meaningful in our society today? Uh, that's a big one. Um, I think the answer is yes, and I think they have not gone away. Uh, so contrary to the assumption of your question, I think that things have actually unfolded differently. Um, so throughout much of the 20th century, character and virtue were cast aside in philosophical discussions, in scientific discussions. I don't know about the culture at large. Uh, and the reasons for that are multiple, one of which was the, um, the predominance of logical positivism and a strong emphasis on empirical research and a suspicion about ethical topics in general. Um, but then there was a big shift, philosophically speaking, in the 1980s uh, with the work of people like Alistair McIntyre and others, bringing back the concepts of virtue and character into the philosophical discussions, theological discussions, human, uh, humanities discussions more generally, really transformative uh, shift that happened in intellectual discussions of character to the point now where um, philosophers are talking about virtue and character all the time, not just philosophers, but I think many other disciplines too. Now, shifting outside of philosophy, in the broader society, I see this happening quite a bit as well. Um, leave aside the broad category of virtue, which might sound highfalutin and you know, uh, overly intellectual. We talk all the time about whether someone is honest or dishonest, right? Or loving or not, or forgiving or not, or grateful or not, or compassionate or not. And that is something that's familiar to us in our discourse and is something that we seem to really care about. Right? I want to be with someone who's trustworthy and honest and loving and caring. And when I say that, I'm talking about character. Right? I want to be with someone who's going to be loyal to me and not betray me. I'm talking about the character traits of someone else. If I'm an employer, I want to hire people with good character traits, and I want to devise tests to discern whose character traits are better than others so I can hire the best people with respect to their integrity, honesty, trustworthiness, loyalty, and so forth. Um, so far from jettisoning these concepts, I think we actually do use them all the time, and we should continue to use them. They're, in fact, extremely valuable. And they're also correlated with all kinds of other things we care about as well, uh, including things like lifespan, health, education, academic performance, uh, and then the list goes on. So I'm a big fan of character. No surprise. <laughs> uh, Agreement, disagreement? Oh, yeah. Well, I think um, you know, what, what these character traits are doing is, is training the brain to suppress the impulses bubbling up from within, so your free won't is better, <laughs> uh, or at least at, at some higher level. Uh, and, and that's what we've been doing for centuries, again, is, is you know, uh, developing customs and mores in which people just suppress their you know, the nastier urges, and that has driven down rates of violence. Stephen Pinker's great book, Better Angels of Our Nature, he's got that great discussion. He sort of resurrected Nor Norbert uh, Elias's The Civilizing Process, in which he part of his database are these um, books of customs and table manners from the Middle Ages. Basically, you read this stuff and got these people were gross. <laughs> I mean, the way they ate, you know, just you know, just stick your hands in the food, put taste the meat, and put it back on the platter, and it's like, don't do that. Oh, okay, you know, or don't stab the meat with your knife, and then put the meat in your, and then put the knife, you know, double dipping, you know, things like that. It's like, why do we need to be told that? Well, you know, we have this, you know, and, and so you learn to suppress those urges, and that's. Those are virtues. Yeah, and I mean, I was going to say, you know, we're born with different, I mean, I would call them temperaments or personality traits. I mean, it's all just how you label it. It's really, how does this person tend to behave across different situations and contexts? And if a person in general behaves in an um, impulsive way, you know, we say that that's part of their, and, and that's part of their personality. And personality is very difficult to change. It's usually constant throughout a lifetime. So you can take a baby and look at its temperament and kind of predict what kind of, you know, pretty accurately what kind of personality traits they'll have. And that's why personality disorders are so hard to treat. And so if you look at it, it it's just how you label it. So if you label somebody who has this virtue of honesty, it's just how they happen to have behaved across different situations. They tend to always behave in this way by telling the truth and we give them that label. But you know, do, do other species have these traits? And what about children? And what, what do you do if somebody is just 
born with a certain predisposition and they can't change. They're less virtuous. Do we look at them as lesser people? And you know, but and then also just to what what Michael had said, yes, we through evolution, there's certain traits that are more valued or personality characteristics. And I think over time, we've we've nurtured them and those people have survived. For example, if you're really agreeable and get along and you display signs of empathy and trustworthiness, you're going to have a lot of get along socially in a group. You're not going to be an outcast. And you know, back in the day, you'll be able to survive more. And so we've kind of breeded these traits. But I don't think we should hold, we should hold people up to they have to be at these this virtuous kind of standard if you're not born with that predisposition. I, I find that might cause a lot of um, torment to certain people.